welcome back in this lecture we'll be addressing a particular method for making accurate measurement this is broadly called ir compensation so this is especially important uh, when you are say trying to develop an electrocatalyst with the lowest oo potential so there is a critical need for measuring potentials of the working electrode very accurately so most of the electrochemical experiment is done via a three electrode system so we want to be specifying the working electrode potential with respect to the potential of the reference electrode so when you try to do this it is critical to know where the reference electrode is trying to measure the potential of the working electrode so in the most common system we use what is called a lagen capillary which has this narrow capillary uh, and the mouth is as close to the working electrode uh, so this is your reference electrode this is the capillary we are discussing and this is the working electrode so there are trade offs to where this mouth of the capillary can be placed so that is better illustrated in this slide supposing you place the capillary far away from the working electrode so what is far here far and close so it is all dependent upon two length scales uh, the most critical length scale here is the length scale uh, uh, involved in double layer thickness which is of the order of let's say 10 nanometers and the capillary tube uh, uh, diameter that is of the order of let's say 1 millimeter okay so when we say too close we are talking about a distance uh, of nanometer which is very difficult let's say you place it uh, compared to this distance you are placing this capillary far away and what is being indicated are equipotential lines on the working electrode okay so because the reference electrode is reasonably far the equipotential lines are not disturbed because of the presence of the capillary as opposed to this if you place the capillary too close to the working electrode as you can see the equipotential lines of the working electrode are also disturbed okay so if you don't want to disturb you want to place it reasonably far away from the working electrode uh, however you won't be sensing the working electrode potential accurately but if you place it too close you might be able to sense the potential uh, more accurately but you will be disturbing the potential of the working electrode because of the placement of the capillary so there is a trade off but there is a way to work around this uh, trade off or estimate uh, the uh, issue involved okay so this method is called uncompensated resistance okay so that's a technical jargon because there are ways to compensate for uh, certain other uh, ohmic resistances but this is something that uh, the potential stat uh, cannot compensate so let's see how you modify the typical electrochemical circuit in the presence of uh, uncompensated resistance which is always present to accommodate for this uh, working uncompensated resistance the circuit is modified so how do we modify that so this is the double layer capacitor associated with this working electrode electrolyte interface this is the this is the resistance associated with the faraday current these two are in parallel and this uncompensated resistance um, associated with the resistance from the working electrode to the mouth of the capillary is called the uncompensated resistance and we introduce this as an explicit circuit element in our representation of the electro electrode electrolyte interface so there is a way to estimate the 
magnitude of the uncompensated resistance, it is most easily illustrated in a trough cell. Okay, this is not a cell that is typically utilized in an um, uh, in an electrochemical experiment, but we will use it for illustrating how do you estimate the uncompensated resistance. For example, if you have a trough cell uh, and you uh, uh, take the geometry of the working electrode in the following manner, and the geometry of the reference electrode also in this uh, manner. Okay, so there are equipotential lines um, in between the working electrode and reference electrode. So these are all equipotential lines in between the uh, working electrode and reference electrode. So the resistance associated between the working electrode and this equipotential surface is the distance between the working electrode and the reference electrode uh, divided by the conductivity and the uh, area. Okay, So it, it depends on the distance between the working electrode that, that can be this distance in this figure or if the reference electrode is placed closer, uh, that distance is corresponds to this. Okay, So if XRE is the distance between the working electrode and the reference electrode. And this geometry has a particular advantage in terms of uh, equipotential uh, surfaces. So given that distance divided by the conductivity of the solution and area will give you a proper estimate of the uh, uncompensated resistance. So th this implementation of this procedure here is challenging because even though we can estimate XRE and the conductivity, area is uh, ill-defined in this case. Here, the area is very well-defined because the reference electrode area and the working electrode area is very are equal and well-defined. Okay? So this will give you an accurate way of estimating the uncompensated resistance. So there are even your advanced potential stat as way of estimating uncompensated resistance to know uh, whether you are estimating uncompensated resistance accurately, you can do a simple experiment with a reversible system. Okay, there are uh, we have discussed many reversible systems uh, in the early part of the course. So, if you do a cyclic voltammetry with uh, a reversible system, you, uh, you you are probably aware of the experimental conditions where the reversibility uh, is well established. So the cyclic voltammetry uh, should be of this structure. However, if you have uncompensated um, IR drop, your cyclic voltammetry will be distorted from the reversible uh, structure of the cyclic, uh, cyclic voltammogram. So if this distortion is greater, then you are, you are not estimating IR um, uncompensated IR correctly. So, uh, so uh, for in an electrochemical, uh, there are many, uh, there is a model uh, reversible systems. So you have to do this experiment uh, with model reversible systems to test whether uh, you are estimating uncompensated uh, IR drop accurately. So there are ways to decrease the uncompensated resistance. Uh, the two common ways beyond the lug-in capillary. Lug-in capillary itself is a way of decreasing the IR, uncompensated IR drop. Beyond this, you can use supporting electrolyte. The supporting electrolyte increases the conductivity, therefore decreases the resistance. This may not be all the time possible because uh, your electrolyte might be optimized for uh, your particular electrode electrochemical surface. So this is one of the approaches. And there is another uh, important uh, approach called the ut utilizing microelectrode. It is an important tool in experimental electrochemistry. So uh, how do you utilize microelectrodes for electrochemical analysis uh, will be the last topic we'll be discussing in this course. With that, I will end this lecture. Thank you.